Uh, we're going to go now and work on the next section or the next part, which is going to be uh, kind of a review of what we did a couple of weeks ago. So we're going to skip uh, around a little bit and go to number 24. Uh, it says classify. All right, let's, let's start off with like this. Okay, we're going to do page 642. We're going to start off with number 24, okay? All right, uh, uh, I'm going to put my name at the top of the page. And uh, what's, what are we learning here? So we're doing perimeter and area in the coordinate plane. That's what we're doing. Okay, and we're going to do, uh, we're going to look at what this says about the, um, the object that we're going to uh, deal with. So I'm going to zoom in on this, try to clear it up a little bit for you guys. Give me just a minute. Okay, so number 24 is what we're focusing in on. It says draw and classify the polygon with given vertices. So these are the points right here. There's three here, so that means it's a triangle. So we're gonna find the perimeter and the area of the polygon. So the perimeter and the area of a triangle, I'm gonna say the area of a triangle is uh, one half based on its height, and the perimeter of a triangle is going to be all the lengths added together. So uh, we'll find out what that is in just a minute. So it looks to me like we're gonna to have to use the distance formula to figure this out. So this is going to be a little bit of a little bit of a refresher on the distance formula and the Pythagorean theorem and all the above. So what I'm going to do is off to the side down here where the area is, I'm going to kind of freehand this drawing and then kind of give you an idea of what's happening here. So we got number 24 is negative two, one, two, three, four, five. So it goes out to here. This is point M. Uh, then I'm going to go three, one, two, three, down two, right here. So this is the point N. Uh, obviously, we're going to have a line connecting these two here. So that's going to be part of our triangle there. And we'll have to find the distance between those two points. And how would we do that? We would use the, the uh, pretty much the Pythagorean theorem to do that. So it's going to be a little bit of calculation involved today. All right, and so where's the third point from a triangle? It's going to be uh, uh, negative two, negative two. So it's gonna be right here, straight across. Now this one's very simple. You don't have to do, when it's a straight line like that, you don't have to do uh, just uh, distance formula. You can just count it. So right here, you just look for, uh, see the difference between these two points right here is th the not this the y value but the the x value the negative three and negative two all you have to do is find out how far it is to get from negative two to negative three and the way you do that is you subtract the two so we'll subtract uh three and negative two all right you could actually do the absolute value of that and get to get the, the distance between those two so that the absolute value of five is five okay so so one length of our triangle is five. So that's, uh, that equals um, the line segment PN, okay? So I'm gonna write that out as line segment PN. Now this line segment MP, MP uh, is figured out the same way. So if you look here at the two, this time the X value is the same and the Y value is different. All I have to do is subtract those two values from each other. Remember to put uh, neg minus negative two, and then distance is really just absolute value. So this turns out to be uh, seven for the length there. Now we don't have to, we didn't have to do anything special to find out those lengths, but we do have to do something special to find out the, the distance here. Well, we could just use the Pythagorean theorem since this is a right triangle. And that might be a smart idea here. And, but, you know, you could do the distance formula and all that. So at this point, it's kind of like up to you where you go with this. So just to refresh you, uh, we've got a, a seven by five triangle. So if I wanted to find this length C, I would use Pythagorean theorem to do that. So let's do A squared plus B squared equals C squared. 
And uh, so we'll do five square plus seven square equals C square. I always like to go small, medium, large like that. 2549 C square. Okay. And so I'm just kind of uh, hitting the high points here. So what's uh, 20 plus 40 is 60. Add another 14 is 74. So this is 74 C square. All right. So we're, the square root of that is going to be uh, now, is there a perfect square in uh, 74's prime factorization? Possibly. I don't know. I have to look at it. But it's, I think it's, uh, if you broke this down, 74, it would be 2 times uh, 35 plus 37. So, no, if you broke it down, you would get 2 times 37. Those are two prime numbers there. So the prime factorization has no perfect square in there. So I'm not going to use that. Uh, we're just going to keep it C equals the square root of 74. And I'm going to uh, check my answer here on my calculator just to make sure I'm right. Second mode clear every time. And then we're going to do, uh, what we say, 5 square plus 7 square equals 74. So that proves it right there. So you just get the square root of 74 and you got the answer. Okay. So now... Uh, what does this all mean? Why do I have to have the square root of 74? What's the point of this? So what you have to do to find the perimeter is you take the, the length of segment PN and the length of segment MP and the length of segment MN and add them all together to get the perimeter. Well, PN was five, MP was seven, and this, uh, the, the new one we just found out, which is the longest side, is the square root of 74. All right, um, so what's the best way to handle this? Okay, so this right here would be uh, seven. So if you look at it like this, five plus seven is 12, okay? And then this right here is 74, the square root of 74. I think I would just leave it in terms of the square root of 74, unless the, uh, the the problem asks for like uh, tenths, you know, you, you can put it in terms of uh, tenths or whatever. This is an exact answer here, okay? Um, so I'd like to keep it exact if we can keep it exact without estimating it. So the, per, the perimeter of the triangle is this, okay? And uh, I don't know, if it'd be, that's in other words, units. I don't know how many, it doesn't say millimeters or centimeters on the nth problem. So it's just units, okay? Now remember, area is units squared, so it's gonna be, the area of the triangle is gonna be one half of the base times the height. Now wait a minute, which one's the base and the height? The base and the height have to be separated by a right angle, like that, okay? So your base is gonna be the line segment PN, and your height is gonna be your line segment MP, okay? So let's rewrite this. So we're going to have one, one half of, what do we say, five and seven. Now, neither one of these are even, so I can't really cut them in half neatly. So uh, half of 35, half of 35, uh, half of 30 is 15, half of five is two and a half, so it's going to be 17 and a half units. Now watch this, squared, okay? Because what does that mean? What is area and perimeter? Perimeter is um, the distance around. Like if you were to walk around this shape, it would be this many units. I would have to take that many steps or whatever. And then the area is, okay, how many squares of, like if this were a landscaping thing, how many squares of grass am I gonna put in this area here, okay? I would put 17 and a half squares of grass. Uh, to fill in that little triangle there. So that like if you went to the, the co-op to buy uh, squares of grass to make your yard look better uh, and your yard was it happened to be a triangle, you could actually figure out exactly how much to spend without overspending. You don't wanna overspend because uh, money's hard to come by guys. So you gotta make, this is what this is all about. And uh, especially if you are in charge of a landscaping company um, you're you're more worried about what you're paying your employees than you are how much it costs to uh, put the stuff on the ground
the employees are the most important thing you got. So you got to be, make sure you can pay them without having to, uh, you know, to, you know, fire somebody. You don't want to, you don't want to fire somebody that's a hard worker. So that's, it all comes down to you keeping your math straight, you keeping your business working and, uh, let's move on. All right. So at this point we've got a square. So I'm just going to freehand this real quick over here to the right on page number 26. So if you look at the problem, you can see the four points here. That means it's a, either a parallel, parallelogram or a square or something. It's a quadrilateral of some sort. So we're going to be negative, uh, negative one, one, two, three. Okay. So E is right there. It's negative one, positive three. F is one, two, three, positive three. So in other words, we don't have to, um, worry about this distance. All I have to do is find the, uh, the, the absolute value of the subtraction of those two numbers. And then G is one zero, which is right here. That's G is at one zero. Um, and then H is at negative three zero. So one, two, three, zero. So in, there's a straight line there. We don't have to worry about that. So H is at negative three zero. Okay, so let's do the ones we can do first. So let's go over. We got EH, we got FG, we've got HG, and we've got EF. Those are all the line segments that make up this quadrilateral. And the ones we can do easily are EF and HG. Okay, so EF and HG are down here. So we're just going to get uh, the. Uh, the absolute value of the subtraction of these numbers that we're fixing to deal with. And what are we going to subtract? So look at, look at HG, look at what's the same between H and G. The Y value is the same, right? So the, what you're going to subtract is your X values. And it doesn't matter which order you put them in, just make sure you put the negatives in the right place. So um, now that's going to be the absolute value of negative four. And the answer is four. And that's why you want it to be absolute value because your, your, uh, your distance is never negative, okay? Um, so let's go e to EF here. So we've got, uh, look at the, what's the same between these, you got your Y value the same here, so your X value is different. It doesn't matter which order you put them in, just make sure you keep your negatives lined up straight. So it looks to me like we're gonna have a parallelogram, okay? Because with these two are parallel, they're the same length and, um, um, they both have a slope of zero just to kind of refresh you on that. Uh, it's a flat line. So these two have a positive slope here, right? So rise over run. So let's go figure out how we're going to do this. Now you could do this two different ways. You could theoretically go in and, and figure out how long this is and how long this is. You really only have to figure out because of this, the way this works, you only have to figure out one line segment. Uh, FG would be a good one. And then you could say, oh, well, if, if FG is this, then I know EH is this because they have the same slant. You see that? So um, their dimensions are the same. The triangle's dimensions are the same. You really could just find out that side right there. And I think that might be the best way to handle this. So let's go and talk about FG. So um, instead of being equal here, I'm gonna use a formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So that means, uh, okay, let's talk about what the a and b are of this. Okay, so we've got a one, two, three height, and then a one, two width of that triangle. So the base would be two and the height would be three. So we're gonna put two squared, three squared, and c squared. So now we gotta figure out what the c squared is, and then we'll have the C, I mean, and then we'll have FG. So let's rewrite this. Um, so that's going to be four plus nine equals C squared. That's 13 equals C squared. So, uh, so C or FG is going to be the square root of 13. All right. All right. I'll pull that over so you can see that. So the, the square root of 13 is what you're going to have here. So same thing up here, you're gonna have the same exact situations, the square root of 13. So what's gonna happen here? Um, 
Now, okay, so we need to find out our area of the quadrilateral and the trunk, the uh, perpendic the perimeter, I can't get it out of my head, uh, perpendicular of the quadrilateral. So the area is gonna be base times height. In other words, it's going to be HG times, oh, the height. Yeah, that's the thing is how, how far was our height on this? Remember it was, uh, so we have HG was what, four? And then the height is three, so it's perpendicular there. So the height is gonna be three, so it's gonna be a four by three quadrilateral. And we have 12 units squared for our answer there, for the quadru for the area. Now that's how many uh, squares you would buy if, this, if your yard were shaped like this, all right? Now let's go to perimeter, let's walk around the shape, okay? So we know we had four on the bottom, four on the top. If I walked four and four, I'd walk eight, right? And then over here, we had the square root of three and the square root of three, 13, I'm sorry, because they were slanted, all right? So we have uh, the perimeter is two lengths plus two widths. Um, so that's gonna be two fours plus two square root of 13s. And so let's write this out as best we can. So we're gonna have eight plus two squared of 13. And I think it's probably best to just leave it in terms of that radical there. Okay, so now I'm gonna zoom in on this so you can see this and read this a little bit clearer. All right, I'll give you a second to kind of catch your breath for a second. I know this is a lot. We've gotta, look, I wanna get through with this, this uh, review. I'm telling you, this has been a while. We've been working on this joker for a while. All right, now, um, let's go to number 28. Okay, we got 28 and 30. So um, let's go over here and see what we got. So we've got another, uh, let me pull this up. So we're gonna find the area of, of the polygon um, with the given vertices. So we're lucky now, we don't have to worry about uh, perimeter. We can just do area. Now I want you to look at this really quickly. Remember, we, uh, there were a couple of different ways to attack this. You could put a huge box around an, an irregular size shape, figure out what that huge box is, and then subtract off each one of these triangles, and then you can find your area. So if you had a crazy wobbly shape going on here, you could estimate with triangles on the outside and uh, you cut off the triangles. It's like, you know, you have a big sheet of paper and cut the, cut the corners off with scissors. What's the area? Well, it's what you cut off. It's the total sheet minus what you cut off. All right, so let's go down to number 28. So we're gonna have an irregular shape here. This is what I would call just a regular, an irregular polygon, okay? And there's not, the sides aren't gonna be the same length. So let's look at our um, 28, and I'm not gonna, well, I do wanna draw it, okay? I do wanna draw it, so let's draw it. That's what's taking me so long on this, is it's for having to draw it. But I just want you to see what's happening here. So negative two, positive two. Thought I could get away without drawing it. I don't think so. Uh, so now let's see, uh, four, one, two, three, four. So W is four, zero. And then uh, let's see what else we've got here. Make sure y'all can read that. All right, uh, X is two, negative three, one, two, three. So down here, I'm just estimating guys. I'm not, I'm not trying to be a, uh, Accurate. So negative three zero is this other one. So y is negative three zero. So in other words, we've got a kind of a is that the same slant as that? I don't I don't know. Let's say one, two, three over one, two. This is one, two over one. No, that these two are actually not parallel. These two lines are. So this makes kind of like a um, just an irregular polygon going on here. Okay, so now let's see what, what we have to do. Um, now, I'm going to draw with dark boxes all the way around, okay? So I'm gonna go 
Now I'm gonna use these tick marks to help me, all right? Dark box all the way around. I'm gonna fill this whole shape in with a, now that's supposed to go through negative three, okay? Remember that. All right, so um, now let's see how long our boxes are. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. So this is a one, two, three, four, five um, sided shape here. So it's five here and five there, obviously, since it's parallel. All right, and then um, this one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's gonna help us here and here figure out. Uh, now, I could zoom in even more. All right, and uh, I want you to see something here. So if you'll notice this shape on the inside, if you took a huge big sheet of paper and cut off the corners with your scissors, you'd have four different kinds of triangles there, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna figure out the area of the whole shape, and then we're gonna figure out the area of these four triangles, all right? So now that's gonna be a little bit, little bit of work, but not too much. Uh, not too much work. So we're gonna do, uh, I'm gonna do area of T, the total shape, which is B times H. So that's gonna be, um, what would what we say, five by seven? So because the whole shape here is seven by five right there. So that's 35 units squared. And that's the total area. Now, I know that the area of this shape inside, which is what I want, is going to be less than 35. So if I were given this on the ACT, I would say, I would look at my answers now and see which, which answers are close to or less than 35. Um, and then just, you know, cut out some wrong answers from there, okay? So eliminate wrong answers as you go. This would be a really fast way to do that. Okay, and so uh, now we're gonna do that. I'm gonna call this the area of triangle one, the area of triangle two, the area of triangle three, and the area of triangle four, okay? So I'm gonna put one, two, three, four, like that in my corners. And that way I'll know, I'll be able to keep up with which triangle I've done already. So if you'll notice, we have a one by two, one by two. So this is, uh, now a triangle is half of base times height, so it's half of one by two, which is going to be one, okay? One square unit, all right? And then uh, area of number two is going to be a, this is the base and the height here, since it's uh, separated by a right angle, so we've got, one, two by one, two, three, four, five, six. Two by six. So we have a six unit squared there. Um, then we have one half of something by something here. So let's go to number three. So this is gonna be a, I'm looking down at this dot here. So it's gonna be one, two across for this width, this base. And then we have from here to here is one, two, three. So it's a two by three. So that's three square units for that. And then the last one, number four, I'm looking at this dot here. So we're gonna try to figure out this base. And so I'm gonna count along this right here. So I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five. So that's five across right there. And uh, let's see how far up we have to go. One, two, three, that's not easy. To, we're gonna have a half situation going on here. So half of 15 is seven and a half. So what you do is you subtract all of these from your 35. So we need to, we need to subtract 35 minus one, minus six, minus three, minus seven and a half. So the thing is you've got to add all of these up first before you subtract them from the, from the total. So what's the, so the area of the triangles is what you subtract from the area of the total. So we got uh, seven plus seven is 14. 14 plus three is 17 and a half units 
squared. And so I'm gonna subtract 17 and a half from 35 and we get uh, 17 and a half. Okay, so what's inside of the, uh, the irregular shape here is the exact same size as all of the triangles added together. So literally you cut the area in half, even though it doesn't look like it. Um, so our area of the, let's just call it polygon, is going to be area T minus area of the triangles. And then that's gonna be 35 minus 17 and a half or 17 and a half units squared. So I'll call that area P, AP for area of polygon, okay? So I'll pull that back so y'all can see that. Now look, our, our sheet's filling up, but uh, we still have plenty of time. We got about 10 minutes left, so we're gonna do more than a sheet today. Uh, just stand up and stretch after this is over. So we'll, uh, you've got plenty of time to do that. So let's go to number 30 and wrap that joker up and be done, okay? So we're gonna try and, uh, and get number 30 done in this little corner. And I'm gonna do it without, uh, well, I wanna do it without drawing it, but I think I might not be able to get away with that. So this time I'm gonna draw my drawing bigger but I'm gonna uh, see if I can fit it into this little corner here, okay? Make your drawing pretty big this time. We can go around the drawing. That way we can see a little clearer what, um, what's going on here. So I made a really thick uh, uh, coordinate plane here. And we're gonna do E, or we're doing number 30, which if you look here, number 30 is, uh, e, F, G, H, so it's, it's another quadrilateral, four-sided figure, four vertices, points at each corner, but I'm not seeing any numbers that kind of match up with each other, so this is really irregular. There's no X's or Y's that really match up with each other, okay? So, uh, so let's go in here, and I'm just gonna kind of fold this out, so one and two, this is E, it's uh, one com negative one comma two, just like that. And then uh, F is going to be two zero. I don't know where the other numbers are gonna be, so I hope I'm not writing it in my shape here. G is one negative three, one, two, three. So G is one negative three. And then uh, H is negative four, one, two, three, four and then negative one, so it's way over here. H is negative four, one. So we're gonna draw our dotted line from point to point, making these line segments. This dotted polygon is the area that I want, but I can't find the area easily because there's no right angles here, okay? Uh, there's no parallel, uh, perpendicular slopes. I don't think this one's perpendicular here. So I'm um, just gonna go with what I know and I'm gonna draw a dark, dark outer shape. Make these lines you know, as accurate as you can free-handed. Dark outer shape. Okay. Okay, now you can see how I've got a perimeter uh, that's an actual parallelogram uh, wrap, wrapped around this kind of funny shaped object and the area of the big total, so the area of the total shape is easy to find. It's base times height, okay? Um, so now we're gonna, uh, I don't know how much time I've got left, guys, so just hang on. If this cuts me off again like yesterday, we'll just start right from right here. So we'll go uh, one, two, three, four, five, six for the base, and then I'm counting these tick marks here. One, two, three, four, five for the height. So this is a 30 unit squared. 30 units squared. So you know the answer is gonna be less than 30 units because we're cutting something off. 
So we're gonna go A1, A2, A3, and A4. So these are the triangles that we're gonna cut off and then we're gonna call AP is equal to AT minus uh, A tri. Okay, so we're gonna cut off all the triangles uh, and then find our area from that. So we know it's gonna be 30 take away something, okay? So let's go do this as fast as we can because we may be running out of time. One, two by one, two, three. This is one half of two by three. That's quad, uh, triangle one. I'm gonna label them as I go. So this uh, three square units, one half of, now let's do one, two, three by one, one, two, three. I think that's three by three. So that's nine, that's four and a half. Okay, and then this guy down here is going to be uh, number three, one, two, one, two, three, four. So it's two by four, so the answer is four. Okay, and then uh, the last one is one, two, three by one, three by one is uh, one and a half when you cut that in half. So three, four, seven, uh, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 and a half, or 12, 13. So it's 13 oh, taken off of 30, which is going to be 17 square units, all right? So that's how you do that. We're gonna stop right there. I think, I don't know if, how much time I've got, if it shuts me off. We made it through all the way one page. Um, and uh, if you need me to answer any questions, for the next couple of uh, minutes or so, just type them in the chat. I may uh, move on to number 32 and try to start uh, and see what, um, what I can finish on number 32 before the time cuts me off. But if it cuts me off, I'll just start up with 32, okay? Uh, if there's any questions, please just type them in the chat. Now your page needs to look like this, okay? The one that you, if you send it in, in the next day or two, uh, your page needs to look like that, okay? So uh, I'll, the top half, I'll break this down. The top half needs to look like this, okay? You can freeze the screen right there on the YouTube video if you're on YouTube. And then uh, the second half looks like this, and you can freeze the screen there if you want to finish out that page and send that in. Okay, so now, lots and lots of writing today. So we've got the page 30. Uh, now we're on page 643, and we need to talk about what we're gonna eliminate here, because I don't think we're gonna be doing, uh, we really are, I think, on our last problem or two. I may just do one problem and then move on to the next section. So I think tomorrow we're gonna hit, we're gonna start doing a, a different chapter, okay, in the, in the textbook. But I think I'm gonna go ahead and start doing number 32, let that be it, and then we don't do geometric probability, uh, where I'm not going to cover that, okay? So I should, probably should, but hey, I'm gonna do whatever I can. So, so we got number 32, we'll start off with that on page 643. If the video cuts me off, then so be it, we'll just figure it out from there, okay? I'm gonna read the problem. This will set us up for tomorrow, all right? Describe the effect of each change on the perimeter or circumference and area of the given figure. So we're gonna describe the effect of change uh, on, the, on the perimeter or circumference and area of the figure. So we gotta figure out uh, area or perimeter. So 32, uh, we have uh, one, two, three, four, vertices, so that means we have a quadrilateral. So that means we're gonna to have to draw this out. All right, so uh, we have negative one, one, this is where P is gonna go. Uh, Q is at three, one. That Q is directly across from P, well that's easy. And then uh, R is three, negative three. So, so far my shape looks like this. Uh, R is at three, negative three, and that's straight down there. Oh, this is gonna be easy to do. And then uh, S is negative one, negative three. Yeah, nice. 
So all we have to do is figure out one, two, three, four. That's a length of four here. We know this side is also four. We know this side is one, two, three, four. This, oh, it's a square. Yes, it's a square. Yay. Okay, so now uh, what we're going to do is um, what if the side length of the square with vertices here is doubled? The side length is doubled. So what happens if I, if I double the side length? So instead of uh, four here, I would get a double of that. So I'd have to go up another one, two, three, four. So you can see how it would change the perimeter. Um, from, we have to walk quite a bit more. All right, so just as a little quick overview, so this is four by four, then you'd have to go out and say, okay, how does that uh, an eight by eight affect that? So you really don't have to draw this out so much. So the area is going to be based on its height here. The area here is going to be based on its height. So uh, we're going to go 16 square units for that. And over here is 64 square units. So if I were to write the answer to that, I would say the area increased um, okay, from 16 to 64 square units, but they want to be more specific here. So what's happening? Um, so instead of four by four, you're getting four by four by four. You see that? Really, it's more like um, you're multiplying the area by four, okay? So the area gets, uh, so the area increases from four to four, which is um, four times the original area. Okay, and then the perimeter is, I don't know if I'm gonna be cut off on my time or not, but if I am, if I am then so, so be it. So let's see, we got the perimeter for the, was uh, two lengths, two widths, two lengths, two widths. Uh, so we're gonna be, perimeter is two fours, two fours. That's eight, eight, 16 perimeter units, not squared. This is eight, eight. So this is 16, 16, 32 units. Perimeter is doubled. Perimeter doubles in size. And the area doesn't double, it quadruples in size. That's the way I would say that. So look at the difference between those two. I'm gonna leave it right there. We're done for the day. This is it. We're done with uh, the review. If you can write that down, go for it. Turn it in. Uh, we're finished with the review. If there's any questions before we leave, just type them in the chat or email me or whatever. We're going to move on to the next chapter tomorrow. Yay, new topic. All right, y'all have a good day, guys.